Hey guys, Devilord17 here, and I gotta go lefty now. If you haven't noticed, my microphone is now in a new area. Um, I rewired my computer after I got done building it. You guys have asked to see the inside of it, know the tech specs. Um, I kind of goofed up on the teardown and rebuild video. I had my camcorder set up, and... Ooh, it's like Inception, I can see myself. Ooh. I, uh... I had this thing running, and I didn't realize that I had it on the high setting, because I had it on high at PAX, and eh, I ran out of space. I ate through, like, 32 gigs of space real fast. So yeah, I goofed up. Um, I'm going to try and salvage as much of the footage as I can. I am also messing around with some new... Uh, microphone settings because I did have to move my rig around a little bit and I, this works out a lot better in total um, but I just have to mess around with my audio setting, settings and I would like to give a shout out even though he'll probably never see it to Boogie2988 or Francis as you guys might know him on YouTube he has the same microphone as me and I and the same tower as me so I asked him how does he make his, his recording so crisp and clear having his microphone so close to his major fan powerhouse NZXT phantom case. So mad props to Boogie. If you don't know who he is, go check him out. He's an awesome guy, really good guy. He does YouTube and Twitch. But without further ado, guys, let's tear open Thunder Horse and let's see what's on the inside. All right, guys, I'm going to try and do this as easy as possible. I am currently standing by my microphone and you can see my beautiful red basketball shorts. But enough of that. Let's get right to the PC. As you can see, it looks a little different from the last time I showed you the outside. I pulled it away from the wall, put it on this side over here. Gave me a little bit more room to work with, a little bit more airflow, and it's a lot easier to open it up to where if I have to change any of the components inside, which I really shouldn't have to do anytime soon. As you can see, there is now a gigant gigantic big blue fan there. That was originally installed with my NZXT Phantom case when I purchased this probably about four or five years ago. I had to take it out because I had a Coolmaster aftermarket uh, CPU heatsink installed on my old motherboard, which I think I talked about in my other video. But um, now that that is gone and I'm using liquid cooling, which you guys will see shortly, I can put that big fan back in the case. I currently have 340 millimeter fans. Two here at the top, one here on the side, and I currently have one, two, three, four hundred and twenty millimeters, I believe, uh, right here, here, one in the front, and one at the back for the new liquid cooling system I put in, but that's back there. I'm not going to bother ripping that apart to show you. So anyway, guys, let's open this thing up, and I'll show you the inside. Now, as you guys might have just noticed, it did get substantially brighter down here. I moved my lamp down here so you can actually see inside the computer. You wouldn't be able to if I didn't have the light. But um, the, before I open this thing up, I've got one more thing I want to show you guys. I'm going to try and not get in the shot here. Uh, if the microphone gets a little varied, it's because I'm trying to move it around. Uh, it was actually nice moving the boom, arc, boom arm. gives me a little bit more flexibility. But over here on the top, on this side, you can't see them. I have a fan controller to where I can control the speed of all the fans. You might notice that they're all really bright and blue right now. They're all spinning pro really fast. We'll say if it's really cold in here, I don't need that much. I can drop these things right down. And you can see on the video, the blue got a little bit lighter. And you can see the fins have slowed down substantially. And they're all variable. I can put them on as fast or as slow as I want. Um, I don't have a fan controller card, which I know most enthusiasts have. I don't have the money for it, and I really don't want to have to hook it up. So this works really well. For the most part, I usually leave these cranked. And people might complain, oh, there's, there's way too much noise from your fans. The noise really doesn't bother me, so I don't worry about it too much. Well, anyway, guys, let me move this wire out of the way, and let's pop this open. The nice thing about my uh, NZXT Phantom case is it has a quick release. Push down, pull out. You can hear the pop. 
We're going to carefully move this off of here. It's on a little hinge. I'm going to pop this down. And there we are, guys. That is the inside of Thunder Horse. Now, I'm going to move over here. Hopefully, you guys can still hear me. I might put this on bi-directional, but it should be okay. We'll start at the top and the back over here. Um, that's my Corsair H50 liquid-cooled self-sustaining system. Uh, the block is made of solid copper. goes right on the CPU. Liquid comes through, comes to the radiator over here. Pretty sure you guys can still see my hand. Yeah. Got the radiator block right here, which is getting vented out into the case. Through the rear fan in the back, the 120 millimeter. That was about 50 bucks for that. I really like it so far. I've been able to overclock my... I've been able to overclock my Intel Core i7 4790K to about 4.6 right now. It's been holding really well at less than 35 degrees Celsius, which is very good for that type of overclock. Very good, very stable. Next to it, you can see I have a set of 32 gig dual channel DDR3 running at 800 megahertz, 99927 timing. Um, I currently have those overclocked to 1800. I believe, not positive, you can quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what I have those out, and I'm pretty sure those are G-Skill. Now, you guys out there might be going, well, Diablo, why do you have 32 gigs? Windows 7 only supports 16. Well, when Windows 10 comes out, it's going to support 32, and I'm thinking about upgrading to professional. I don't know how long it's going to be until Windows 10 comes out, but we'll see what happens. So over here, I'm just going to try and slowly pan this so you guys can see what's going on in here. Now we're moving towards the front of the case where I have my drive bays right here. I really, I only have one optical drive in here, and it's my CD, my CD DVD uh, Blu-ray burner. I, ne I never use the thing, and I'm holding the top of my case like you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to do hand jive a little bit, a little bit of hand jive. But I only have one optical drive in here. You can kind of see the cables, the one set of cables over here. Uh, I did try to do as much cable management as possible with this case because it does offer a lot of bang for your buck. Um, technically, now that I have Windows installed on this, I could probably take the optical drive right out and not even worry about having the burner because I barely ever use it. All my downloads are digital. So anyway, guys, we're going to move down here. I accidentally hit the off button for the recording. But anyway, we're going to move down here to the used-to-be powerhouse of my system. The powerhouse now is now my i7. But this is my EVGA 2 gigabyte NVIDIA GeForce 680 GT. Um, very powerful card. I think I spent 450 bucks on it when it first came out. Um, it still runs every game, usually on higher ultra settings. I don't have any problems with it. I love this card. It's a very good card. Um, I don't have it currently overclocked at the moment. I don't really have a need to do so. But I can if I'd like to. I have the software to do it. Um, I don't know if they have completely discontinued this card, but I would have liked to get another one so I could run them in SLI because I have the power supply and I have the room to do it. Now, speaking of... Oh, God. There we go. Boom! Just like that. And now, speaking of power supplies, we're going to move down to the bottom of the case down here. We got our... Corsair HX750 modular power supply. Now you guys might be wondering, well, what's a modular power supply? What, is, what does that mean? Well, down here, I'm going to carefully try to do it. Down here on the back, each one of these ports, other than the main, the main power supply and the CPU power, these can all be disconnected. Now, if you've ever opened up the inside of a regular store-bought computer before, there's freaking cables everywhere. And you'll notice that the bottom of my case is actually very clean. And that's due to this modular power supply to where I can plug in what I need and leave out what I don't. And that's one of the nice things about these Corsair power supply units. And a lot of other brands have started to opt doing it. But I love it. 750 is more than enough power for this system. And it leaves me rude to upgrade without having to worry about having to drop more money on a power supply. Now the next thing over here, if we go to the other bottom side of the case, we're going to scooch up a little bit. You can see I picked myself up a 2 terabyte Western Digital Green Drive. It is a super quiet drive. It's e e e eco-friendly, which I don't know, you know, they're just throwing that on there to try and sell it. I mean, it doesn't use a lot of power. Most modern hard drives don't. So I have that in there, and you can't see it, but up here on this drive tray right here, you can kind of see the edge of it. I have a 500 gig you can't really see it. It's up here on this drive bay right here, but that is my 500 gig 
solid state from Samsung. I just picked it up. I think it's the 840. I'm trying to look at my little cheat sheet on my computer. Yeah, it's a 840 Evo. This thing is blazing fast. But yet again, it was also another $250. So now I'm going to probably try and pop this off of here, zoom out a little bit, and I'm going to want to show you the showcase, the creme de la creme of the show here, the Asus Z87 Sabertooth motherboard. I love this motherboard, so let me take this off here, and I'm going to try my best to showcase the motherboard and get some close-in shots for you guys. We are now officially manual mode. Now guys, like I said, I am... You're going to watch me putting this thing on. You're going to give somebody sickness. Um, so, yeah, you guys can see my cat. Pretty sure you can see my cat. Yeah, there's Miss Amber. All right, so let me pop this up. So there, now you guys got a little little zoom back view of it, of the NZXT, NZXT Phantom. Um, I have to have the charger cable in here. But now you guys can see there's the uh, the fan fan controls. It also has uh, audio in, audio out, two U a USB and a USB 3.0, and a SATA. Um, the nice thing about the motherboard, which I'm going to pour it out, point out in about two seconds, it came with a lot of these little caps that whatever you're not using, you can cap them off. So, like, say if you have an animal like I do, they won't get their claws stuck in them, and there won't get dust and dirt in there, which is really, really nice. I give Asus a lot of props for including those in the motherboard. I'm going to try and give you guys a shot of the front. You can see the blue over here from the other... 120 millimeter fan and then I got all my stickers on the front that shows what's in the case But anyway, let's zoom, get in here and I'm gonna try and do the best I can with this Without dropping this cable on that fan but as you can see back there That is the Asus Z87 Sabertooth motherboard Sexy little motherboard, and I forgot to put one of the covers on here. If you can see, one of my PCI ports is exposed, but the other ones aren't. That has a nice little cap on it. Uh, the nice thing about this motherboard is that it came with caps. that You can cap off what you're not using. Very nice motherboard. I got it in black. No reason to get it in anything else. You guys can get a nice shot of the radiator going out the back. We got our gigantic... 240 millimeter fans at the top optical drive got some decent cable management going on in here very open very adequate airflow i love this case if you guys are on the edge about getting a decent a decent case and you want to try building your own pc this would definitely be my recommended recommendation for you guys and the nice thing about this case, too, is because a lot of people ask me about the water cooling. My only main concern with that is they do leak. They can leak. They can. Doesn't mean that they're going to, but they can. Um, if you want to do full modular liquid cooling, you can. That's what these two grommets on the back of the case are for. I'll give you a little shot of that, too, while we're at it. If I can. You can see... There's mounting hardware for all that. I got all my cables coming out the back. Nothing really too spectacular back here. Nothing to really showcase. Well, there you go, guys. That's the NZXT Phantom case with the Asus Z87 motherboard saber tooth thrown in there. I love this thing. This computer's blazing fast. Let me close this thing back up. And just so that you guys don't think I'm lying, I'll show you some tech specs from my desktop. See you in a minute. Can you tell I've been learning how to do more stuff with OBS? Anyway, guys, just so that you guys, uh, you know, don't think I'm like blowing smoke up your ass or anything. I just want to show you some of the tech specs on here. I'm going to be looking back and forth, just kind of throwing some stuff out there. Because I know some of you, um, uh, one of my friends in particular who went to school and he's very, 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 very good at math, um, does not understand any of this on the screen right now. So I'm going to try and explain some of it so that way... He can learn a little bit about computing and maybe someday go out and build his own rig like this because, you know, I got people that come over and ask me, whoa, that's awesome. How'd you learn how to do that? And it's it's not as hard as everyone thinks it is. So 
Here you go. I have two programs open right here. One of them is uh, Specky, which is what I use for most people's computers. If somebody brings, if a client brings me a computer and I want to know what's in it without having to rip the computer apart, this will tell me everything that is inside. So as you can see, I'm running Windows 7 Home Premium 64-bit. As you can see, I am running my Intel i7 4790K, 4, 40 gigahertz at 35 to 34, 33, 36 mid 30s right now because you know i am recording and it, the recording does use some processor so well within acceptable range 32 gigs of ram running at 800 megahertz 99924 like i said my saber tooth z87 1150 socket at 28 degrees celsius and that's another thing that's nice about this program is that it tells you the temperatures of everything the ambient temperatures so you can keep an eye on them um, number one cause of most computer problems is overheating. So if there's ever an overheating problem, if you can get the computer booted and put Specky on it, you can see what the temperatures are. Or you can check it in the motherboard before somebody jumps down my throat. Graphics, I got my dual Asus VN290 monitors, which you guys already know about from my other video. And if you haven't seen it, you should. And then I got my GeForce GTX 860 graphics card, which is at 33 degrees Celsius. A little bit cooler than my processor and that's normal storage devices i got my my book solid state optical drive and high definition audio because i don't use a uh i don't use an aftermarket audio card i have no need for one so if you come over here to this window this is my overclock utility okay right now i have it overclocked each core is overclocked as you can see over here at, at a 46 multiplier in other words, that means instead of being a 4.0 over here, I am overclocking it and push more, pushing more voltage into the CPU, and I'm getting a 4.6. And that's pretty stable. I did about a 10-minute uh, stress test on it, and it got up about 70 degrees Celsius, 75 degrees Celsius. I went a little bit higher, and it was a little too much for my liking. It was a little too hot for my liking, even with the water cooling. I think I might need to tweak the actual fan settings to um, <clears throat> pass some more air through that radiator to keep the ambient temperatures a little bit down. But I have to do that inside the BIOS, which I can't show you guys uh, without having to break this bad boy out again. So anyway, now we got some specs on the actual processor itself it tells you the socket the code names the family it's in the visualization the fans right now the fan is spinning at 657 rpms that should be higher that should be about 800 900 rpms so if i go into the bios i should be able to drop that actually i should be able to up that a little bit and it'll drop my cpu temperature which is probably what i'm going to do after this video is done so down here, you can see each core is running at a... You can see as I'm doing stuff, you can watch the multiplier switch. So core 0, which is technically core 1, you'll see that pops up 4, 6, 4, 6, because I have the... Because I that's showing that the overclock is actually working. It's actually using it and pushing those cores to a 4.6 when it's needed. And you're going to see those jump up pretty high because I am... I'm technically recording my audio, the video, and my desktop. And that's a lot for video software to handle. Especially OBS, because OBS is freeware. Shareware. Android. So anyway, now you can see all the motherboard specs, which I don't know, you guys probably don't care about. Shows what's in what socket, whatever, blah, blah, blah. My storage devices, I can minimize them all, maximize them all, and it'll show me what's available. The one optical drive I have, the audio, my peripherals, everything that is connected to my PC right now, and my network. And also, I will show you that my hard drive is also called Thunder Horse. It's actually my friend Mark's idea to name my computer and system Thunder Horse. It wasn't really mine, it was his. But, not too bad. Well, there you have it, guys. That's the virtual tour of Thunder Horse. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed recording it for you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box down below. I'll try to respond to them as quick as I can. I'm usually pretty busy, as you can tell. It took me almost a week and a half to get this video up for you guys on this tour.
As always, guys, like, subscribe, and share my videos with your friends. Helps my channel to grow. Leave some comments down below for me and whatever games or walkthroughs or whatever you'd like to see me do next, because none of that partakes to this video at all. And as always, I will see you guys next time. Peace. Got the double deuces.